Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our grand library. Today, our tale takes us into the depths of history, where we shall uncover the secrets of Nomragon. Nestled in the rocky foothills of Dunmora, just to the west of the majestic dwarven stronghold of Ironforge, lies a marvel of engineering, the subterranean city of Nomragon. This city stands as evidence of gnomish brilliance, ambition, and of course, ingenuity. However, as we delve into today's tale, we'll uncover that this grand history hasn't always been as glorious as it appears. Our recount of Nomragon's history reaches back to the very origins of Azeroth itself, unfolding with the creation of the Titan Forged. When the Titan Pantheon, a collective of Titans entrusted with shaping and ordering worlds, discovered Azeroth succumbing to the corruption from the Black Empire and the Old Gods, they recognised the urgent need to rescue the world soul of the planet. To combat the Black Empire, the Pantheon created the Titanic Keepers. Mimiron, one of these Keepers, shared the task of restoring Azeroth to its former glory with the others. Some of these Keepers were imbued by the Pantheon's members with specific likeness and powers that could be used to aid Azeroth. After the war with the Old Gods, the Pantheon's Titans faced a dilemma in dealing with the Old Gods on Azeroth. They couldn't eliminate the Old Gods without causing devastating harm to the planet, so consequently, they opted to neutralise and confine the Old Gods within prisons. The prison relevant to our tale today is Ulduar, located in the very northern reaches of Northrend. To oversee these prisons, the Titans entrusted the role of jailers to the beings known as the Keepers. To aid in the protection of Azeroth, the Keepers initiated the creation of several machines, with one notable example being the Forge of Wills, which can still be found today within the Halls of Stone Wing of Alduar. Mimiron participated in the creation of the Forge of Wills. The forge was designed to infuse Azeroth's dormant world soul with cosmic energies and could draw on the life essence of Azeroth to create sentient life. The Keepers utilised the forge to craft new seed races known as the Titan Forged for reshaping and ordering the world. Initial designs proved overly complex, resulting in the creation of the stone-skinned savages known as the Trogs. The Keepers then refined their designs, giving rise to the kind-hearted Earthen. These were the next generation of Titan Forged that emerged from the Forge of Wills. The Trogs, though troubling with all of their issues, were spared from destruction. Instead, the Titanic Watcher, Ionair, constructed Alderman, a subterranean vault serving as a chamber for the Trogs. Another Titan Forged race introduced by Mimiron were the Clockwork Mechanomes, designed directly to serve him. In the distant aftermath, the Old God, Yog Saron, confined within Ulduar, detected a significant upheaval among the keepers responsible for guarding his prison. Seizing the opportunity presented by the demise of the Pantheon, Yog Saron exploited this moment to weaken his custodians. By corrupting the Forge of Wills and inflicting it with a curse referred to as the Curse of Flesh, any Titan Forged entity created by it underwent a transformation into a mortal being, complete with skin and flesh, and it was so powerful it even extended its influence to the preceding generation of Titan Forged. As a result of these events, some of the Mechanomes left their ancestral abode of Ulduar and took on the role of caretakers in the facility of Alderman alongside the Earthen. Much like their fellow Titan Forged, the Mechanomes were subject to Yogg-Saron's Curse of Flesh. The Mechanomes residing in Alderman bore the full weight of the curse approximately 3,000 years ago, evolving into the fleshy beings that would eventually be recognised simply as the Gnomes. Physically and mentally diminished, these creatures abandoned the halls of Alderman, seeking refuge in the nearby caverns and mountainous peaks. Driven solely by the imperative of survival and an instinctual relentless pursuit of technological advancement, the early Gnomes deliberately abandoned the practice of record keeping, leading to a collective forgetting of their heritage. As the transformed earthen from Alderman, now embodied as fleshy creatures known as dwarves, ventured into Chasmodan, they stumbled upon the gnomes nestled within their mountainous caverns of Dunmora. Captivated by the gnomes' technological prowess and recognising a shared kinship, the dwarves actively collaborated with the gnomes in establishing the groundwork for what would evolve into the grand city of Gnomogon. Assisted by the Dwarves, the Gnomes swiftly constructed a marvel of a city, spanning four levels and concealed within the mountains. The city features notable areas and wings, including the Dormitory, Engineering Labs, the Hall of Gears, Tinker's Court, and even a private quarters designated as Sector 17 for the High Tinker. Following the founding of the city around 2,500 years prior to the events surrounding the Dark Portal, the narrative of the Gnomes with the Gnomogon gradually fades into the realm of the unknown, 
It was during these millennia that engineering skills rapidly advanced. During the onset of the First War, as the Orcs from Drenor surged through the Dark Portal, human kingdoms, dwarves and gnomes forged an alliance to repel the invaders. In the early stages of the Second War, the Orcish Horde advanced into Kazmodan, prompting the dwarves and the gnomes to reallocate all of their energy in resisting the Orcish onslaught. Despite the Horde besieging both Ironforge and Gnomeragon, the gnomes' inventive booby traps and explosives thwarted the invaders. Gnomeragon, fortified by an impenetrable iron gate, withstood the relentless siege. Frustrated by the lack of progress, Horde Warchief Orgrim Doomhammer diverted the main army northward to Lordaeron leaving Kilrog Deadeye and the Bleeding Hollow Clan to maintain a blockade on Gnomeragon and Ironforge. The defenders held their ground long enough for Supreme Commander Anduin Lothar to liberate them from the rear. It was during these wars a particular gnome distinguished himself. Galbin Mechatork gained prominence in Gnomeragon with his first and arguably most popular invention, the revolutionary travelling device known as the Mechanos Droider. Subsequently, Mechatork continued his prolific work. His creations included the gyromatic micro-adjuster, the repair bot, and also pioneered work on the Deep Run Tram. Before the onset of the Third War, the Gnomish Electorate elected Mechatork as their High Tinker, acknowledging his various technological triumphs and their positive impact on the Gnomish race. For many gnomes, he became a role model embodying the qualities the gnomes sought in a high tinker. Mechatork's lifelong close friend, Sicko Thermoplug, also ascended through the ranks of the gnomes, mirroring Mechatork's rise, gaining favour among the intellectual elite. Thermoplug eventually secured the position of chief advisor to his friend, the High Tinker. A brooding yet imaginative engineer, Thermoplug served as Mechatork's advisor for many years. Mechatork's and Thermoplug's friendship, however, was overshadowed by jealousy. Unbeknownst to Mechatork, Thermoplug believed he was the true heir, so to speak, to the Gnomish throne and was convinced that he deserved the position of High Tinker, a fact that would later play a crucial role in the tale of Gnomogon. Throughout the conflicts that Azeroth witnessed in the years after the opening of the Dark Portal and up until the Third War, the Gnomes, from their technological marvel of Gnomogon, offered crucial support in weaponry, vehicles and troops to the broader alliance. However, after Lordaeron fell to the Scourge during the Third War, the Gnomes abruptly withdrew their aid. Unbeknownst to the armies of the Alliance at the time, this was due to Gnomogon facing an unforeseen threat from Trogs. These beings awakened by the Dwarven excavations around Alderman. These creatures, drawn to gnomish machinery, infiltrated the city through tunnels. After withdrawing from the Alliance war effort during the Third War, the gnomes refocused their attention on fighting the Trogs. After enduring this five-year siege, the Trogs successfully infiltrated Gnomogon's engineering quarters. This meant the Trogs had access to perilous and unstable materials that posed a threat to the city's survival. In a state of desperation and confusion, Mechatork sought assistance from Thermoplug. Thermoplug proposed a drastic plan, detonate a bomb to release a lethal radioactive gas into the invaded sections of the city. He presented falsified data to Mechatork, misleading him about the gas's behaviour, claiming it would only affect the Trogs in the lower city while leaving the gnomes unharmed in the upper urban tunnels, where they were supposedly protected by the clean wind domicilic air filters. Facing limited alternatives and reluctant to seek help from the Alliance who were in the throes of the Third War, Mechatork reluctantly agreed to Thermoplug's scheme, perceiving it as a way to end the invasion. When the bomb detonated, the gas spread throughout the entire city just as Thermoplug had envisioned. However, the reality surpassed his expectations. While the gas did kill some trogs, it proved devastating to the gnomes as well. Instead of remaining unharmed, many gnomes waiting in their homes perished as the toxic clouds passed through the filters. The gas's potency exceeded Thermoplug's calculations, resulting in the death of nearly 80% of the gnomish population within the following days. The remaining survivors suffered mutations, transforming them into the insane leper gnomes. Contrary to Thermoplug's intentions, the catastrophe did not turn the gnomes against Mechatork. Instead, they continued to support him as their leader. Mechatork led the healthy survivors in evacuating Gnomeragon and seeking refuge in Ironforge. Conflicting accounts suggest that Thermoplug was either left behind, trapped in the city he had devastated, or disappeared shortly after the evacuation. Regardless, the radiation transformed Thermoplug into a leper gnome, rendering him completely insane. Seizing 
control of the toxic city, Thermoplug declared himself the new techno overlord and proclaimed himself the king of the gnomes, easily recruiting other leper gnomes to serve under his rule. King Magni Bronzebeard extended asylum to the gnomes who seeked refuge and allocated a dedicated district in Ironforge for their settlement, a space that Mechatork was already acquainted with due to his prior involvement with the Deep Run Tram. This area was transformed into Tinkertown. It was only upon reflection that Mechatork fully grasped the extent of his old friend's madness after the evacuation. As revelations about Thermoplug's deceitful schemes gradually came to light, it was rumoured that Mechatork's once trusted advisor, Thermoplug, had been corrupted by greed and the desire to become king of the gnomes, and ultimately betrayed his people by allowing the Trog invasion to happen. Thermoplug ruled over Gnomogon from the Tinker's court, piloting a colossal, cauldron-shaped prototype armor suit. Surrounded by deranged leper gnomes and trog minions, he defended his reign against any surface intrusion with ruthless intelligence. Despite his continual production of new inventions, Thermoplug's impatience persisted. Each creation was swiftly deployed without thorough safety and effectiveness testing. The Electrocutioner 6000, his initial venture into harnessing electricity as a weapon via a supercharged mechano tank, resulted in the survival of only one pilot. Alongside this, safeguarding the blueprints to a new super rig in the Tinker's Court safe, Thermoplug maintained connections with the Dark Iron Clan, evident through the presence of the Dark Iron agents and the Dark Iron Ambassador in Nomragon. The Dark Irons collaborated in the creation of the mentioned rig. Indications also suggest that Thermoplug might have been researching a cure for the leper gnome's condition. The burden of guilt and grief over Nomragon's loss weighed heavily on Mechatork. However, the most profound struggle stemmed from the bewilderment surrounding his old friend's betrayal. Gnomes, as a race, had always relied on each other, making it inconceivable for a gnome to harm his own kind in the pursuit of power. Fueled by fury, Mechatork ordered Thermoplug's demise. A group of heroes embarked on the mission and were sent into the depths of Nomragon to slay Thermoplug. They eventually returned with a tale of victory. However, upon closer scrutiny, scrutiny, Mechatork deduced that the mechanised overlord defeated in the city depths was likely a cleverly engineered copy of Thermoplug, and that the real Thermoplug was still alive. Realising that overcoming his nemesis required a more robust strategy, Mechatork diligently worked on plans to reclaim his city. His relentless brainstorming led to the formulation of Operation Gnomeragon, a brilliant, multi-phased assault plan crafted to liberate the gnomish capital and bring the genuine Thermoplug to justice. With the operation poised to commence, resourceful gnomes like Doc Cogspin, Captain Tread Sparknozzle, and Drill Sergeant Steamcrank oversaw preparations and fine-tuned new technology crucial for the offensive. Simultaneously, Mechatork began rallying all able-bodied gnomes to join the attack. After meticulous planning, Galbin Mechatork finally set his plan into motion and initiated Operation Gnomeragon. Guided by Mechatork, the Gnomeragon exiles and their alliance allies gathered their forces at Steel Grill's depot. The designated staging grounds for the Gnomeragon offensive and the manufacturing site for the gnome's mechano tanks. Once the preparations were complete, Makatork led a comprehensive assault to secure control over Gnomeragon's airfield. By doing so, he established a surface command post, and from here they initiated a raid into the lower tunnels of Gnomeragon. After securing the entrance, Mechatork's forces advanced toward Thermoplug at the heart of the city. In retaliation, Thermoplug unleashed swarms of trogs led by Gasherik. Alongside this, armies of leper known soldiers under the command of Commander Boltcog. As Mechatork's forces persisted, Thermoplug revealed his trump card, the Irradiator 3000, a device reminiscent of the original radiation bomb that had poisoned Gnomeragon all those years ago, but this time round it was 26 times more powerful. It initiated a 10 minute countdown to explosion, until Thermoplug, realising an oversight by his underlings, intervened, reducing the timer to 10 seconds. This forced Mechatork's forces to immediately teleport back to the safety of Tinkertown in Ironforge. However, Mechatork asserted that with the surface of the city reclaimed, Thermoplug had merely bought himself some more time. In the ongoing effort to reclaim Nomragon, Thermoplug devised a trap within Mechatork's former living quarters in Sector 17. He rigged a tripwire to the High Tinker's old spectacles left behind during the evacuation. After conducting a thorough sweep of the area, Mechatork, alone and unarmed for some reason, entered the quarters and picked up the glasses. Only realising it was a trap, 
too late. Thermoplug sealed the room's doors and unleashed three trogs with the intention of killing the High Tinker. Throughout the ordeal, Thermoplug taunted Makatork through the intercom, reveling in the belief that Makatork's demise would devastate the gnomes. Makatork, utilising his surroundings, managed to fend off the trogs while engaging Thermoplug in conversation, mocking his failed genocide plan. Exploiting the flaws in Thermoplug's trap design, Makatork dispatched the trogs. Before he could escape, Thermoplug returned with more trogs to confront Makatork personally. Now equipped with a new, agile, human-sized battlesuit, Thermoplug explained that the previous suit was too unwieldy, asserting that the King of the Gnomes should be on equal footing with other rulers. They exchanged words, with Thermoplug expressing bitterness over the lack of recognition he believed he deserved while working under Mechatork. In response, Mechatork unveiled how he had allowed Thermoplug to take credit for the siege engine guns secretly reworked by Mechatork himself due to their friendship. For a fleeting moment, Thermoplug appeared reminiscent of the bright young gnome Mechatork had once befriended, but the moment quickly passed. Thermoplug dismissed it as an example of Mechatork's weakness and prepared to kill him. Mechatork activated a backup plan, exploiting the repurposed trap mechanism. He released a tightly wound spring, instantly killing every trog in the room and severing Thermoplug's suit in half, disconnecting his legs from his body. Although Thermoplug survived, thanks to the suit cauterizing his wounds, Makatork chose to leave him for dead. He considered it a fitting punishment for Thermoplug's crimes against the gnomes. While Operation Gnomeregon did not achieve its primary goal of reclaiming the city, it did pave the way for the establishment of a new Tinkertown at its entrance. Thermoplug, who had survived being cut short, opted to stay concealed within Gnomeregon, directing his minion, Raslo Crushcog, and a contingent of leper gnomes to disrupt Mechatork's forces on the surface. Their aim was to hinder their rebuilding efforts and prevent the completion of the capital's reclamation. Mechatork dispatched a force known as Safe, commanded by Nevin Twistwrench, to recover surviving gnomes. The Gnomeregon exiles gradually reclaimed sections of the city, including the old dormitory. Mechatork's forces continuously clashed with Thermoplug's irradiated gnome units. Seeking to impede the trog advance, the High Tinker enlisted Karman Palegrip and his demolitions team, ultimately leading to a joint gnome and dwarven force to overcome and slay one of Thermoplug's staunch supporters, Raslo Krushkog. With this defeat, Thermoplug found himself unable to dispatch more of his followers to the surface, and Mechatork confidently asserted that the Mechaneer's ultimate defeat was on the horizon. In a dramatic conclusion to Thermoplug's story, the G Team, an elite unit enlisted by the High Tinker to reclaim Gnomeregon, subsequently sought the assistance of adventurers to bring about Thermoplug's demise. In a brutal campaign, together they all successfully vanquished Sicko Thermoplug. The downfall of Thermoplug heralded a new era for the gnomish race. Gnomes could now gradually reclaim sections of the city. Unfortunately though, the scars inflicted by Thermoplug's actions will endure for many years. A substantial part of the city remains uninhabitable due to the lingering radiation in its halls. The prospect of a time where the gnomish race can thrive again in Gnomeregon seems elusive, and achieving it may require many years. Some gnomes have established a base in the hills surrounding the city, dedicating their lives to curing irradiated gnomes in the area and slowly purifying the halls of the city. As we wrap up the Gnomeregon saga, emotions are profound, echoing the highs and lows that shape this underground city. Once a symbol of gnomish brilliance, Gnomeregon's origins trace back to Azeroth's early days, a testament to progress and unity envisioned by the Titan Forged. Yet, Sicko Thermoplug's betrayal plunged the Gnomeregon into chaos, subjecting the gnomes to trog onslaughts, radiation, and of course, betrayal. High Tinker Galbi Mechatork emerged as a beacon of hope amid all of this despair, navigating a path of friendship turned rivalry with Sicko, defining a resilient saga. Operation Gnomeregon, a daring assault, symbolised the gnomish spirit. Despite setbacks, Galbin's determination to reclaim Gnomeregon persisted, marking a turning point after Sicko's fall. Yet, like we said before, the scars linger. As gnomes work to purify their home and cure irradiated kin, Gnomeregon's legacy endures. United in restoring their city, the gnomish race faces an arduous journey, but Gnomeregon's spirit lives on in those who defy the tragedy. In this emotional journey through Gnomeregon's history, we witness resilience and the enduring power of hope. As the gnomes seek redemption, the echoes of Gnomeregon's past resonate through Azeroth, a reminder that even in the face of adversity, the gnomish spirit prevails. <laughs>